Hey guys, my name is Tarshil Parmar and I'm a freelance data engineer and a YouTuber. In this particular video, we will be discussing about some of the top AWS services you should know as a data engineer. Data engineering is very big field and there are so many tools available in the market for different types of work. One of the most important aspect of data engineering is cloud computing. As a data engineer, you need to process huge amount of data from terabytes to petabytes and it is nearly impossible to process that amount of data in your local computer. That is the reason we have cloud platforms. Instead of building your own server such as buying different hardware such as hard disk, RAM, processing power and maintaining it, we can rent these things from different cloud providers. There are mainly three top cloud computing platforms that are available in the market, AWS, Amazon Web Services, GCP, Google Cloud Platform and Microsoft Azure. Now you can pick any cloud platform based on your job or interest but if you are completely beginner then I will suggest you to start with AWS because it has highest market segment and it is quite easy to learn if you are a beginner. As a data engineer, you will be working on different cloud services to complete your project and process the data. So in this particular video, I will explain you different services available on AWS cloud and its real world use cases where you will be using these services in real world and in your project. The best way to learn anything is by doing hands-on practice. So all of the tools and the services that we are going to talk in this particular video, you can learn by doing hands-on projects. And for that, we have a platform called as Project Pro. Project Pro is a curated library of verified solved end-to-end -end project in the space of data science, machine learning and big data. These projects are created by top industry experts from top global companies such as Microsoft, Google, Amazon. You will find end-to-end -end project solutions, reusable codes, guided videos and 24 into 7 customer support. So after watching this particular video and once you learn about different services, you can go to Project Pro and do the hands-on practice there. So the first service on the list is we have S3, Simple Storage Service. S3 is an object storage, so it means you can store any types of files such as images, audio, video, whatever the file type you want, you can store on S3. But why do we use S3 on the first place? Number one reason you can use S3 is to build data lake. If you don't know what data lake is, then data lake is basically a centralized repository where you can store all the different types of files for further processing. You can also use S3 for backup and restore. So consider you have a relational database and you have very important data stored in that particular database. Now, if you have been managing this relational database by yourself, then you will have to make sure to take the backup of those data because sometimes some error occurs and you might lose your database. So it is really important to take backup of your database and you can use S3 as a backup solution for your database. There are so many other use cases of S3 such as you can use it for archive storage. You can also host your static website on it and many more. If you want to know more about S3 then I will put the AWS documentation link in the description. You can read more about it. Second service on the list is we have Amazon Athena. Now if you know the basic understanding of databases then you will know that we use SQL structured query language to query different types of database and table. In the relational database, we are physically storing all the data in databases and tables. But while using Athena, you don't have to worry about that. You can directly query on top of your data files. So what happens is that you can store your data onto S3 and you can build the Athena table on top of it and use structured query language SQL to query directly from the files. So on Athena, you don't have to worry about managing any servers because you're directly querying from the file. So the main advantages of using Athena is that you don't have to manage any server because it is serverless. You also don't have to worry about any backups because you are directly querying from the files. And one of the most important advantage of Athena is you only pay for the data that you scan using query. So generally what happens, you can create the relational database, you will store all of your data there, you will have to manage your server, you also have to take care of the security, manage different users and many more. But on the case of Athena, you don't have to worry about any of these things. Third service on the list is AWS Lambda. So while we are talking about serverless, then one of the most important service available on AWS is Lambda. So when we want to process any data, the first thing we need to do is set up the coding environment, packages, servers clusters and many more. AWS Lambda removes all of this. You only worry about writing your code and everything else from the scaling of the server and coding environment will be taken care by AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is a serverless event-driven compute service that lets you run code virtually any type of application or backend service without provisioning or managing any server. So why do we even use Lambda on the first place? So very basic use case is to write small ETL jobs. So if you have any files stored on S3, and if you want to process that data based on different events, then you can use AWS Lambda. Service number fourth on the list is EMR. Elastic MapReduce. If you have heard about Hadoop, Spark, MapReduce, HDFS, 
well this is the service that provides all of those functionality the concept of distributed computing is that you cannot process the large single file on a single computer so what we basically do we divide this large file into smaller chunks and we use multiple computer to process those data and at the end we combine the final output and make it one this is the basic fundamental concept of distributed system and on this fundamentals all of these systems such as hadoop and spark work amazon emr is a cloud big data platform for running large scale distributed data processing jobs interactive sql queries and machine learning application using open source analytical framework such as apache spark hive and presto so what are the use cases of emr so if you want to extract analytical data from multiple sources and process it then emr is the place you can do that you can also build a scalable data pipeline so if you have data from one source and if you want to put that data on some other source by processing it individually then you can also do that using emr and at the end you can also use emr for real time data processing and while we are talking about etl and data processing the number 5th on the list is amazon glue in the case of emr you have to create cluster manage cluster and scale them according to your needs but if you don't want to deal with all of these then you can use amazon glue aws glue is a serverless data integration service that makes easy to discover prepare and combine data for analytics machine learning and application development so aws glue has many different use cases the number one use case is to build basic etl pipeline so if you have data coming from the multiple sources you can use those data and process that using aws glue as aws glue is serverless it will automatically scale based on the resources it needs and it will complete the job on the time second use case of aws glue is you can create the catalog so if you want to store the information about different schema details of your files then you can use aws catalog you can use the crawler to extract different schema from the files and then query that data using aws athena so this is basically you can use different components of aws services connect it together and make your final project and if you want to do end to end aws project then we also have the projects available on the channel just search about youtube analytics project and you will find it we will also put the link in the description so you can check it out now the question is why we are processing this data and number one reason is that to do analytics on top of it now relational databases are not designed for analytical work oltp online transaction processing also you can call relational databases are designed for different operations such as this read write update so if you want to process the faster information you can use relational database but if you want to understand the large range of data such as last three years of the data then you cannot do that using relational database it will take lot of time and resources that is the reason we have olap system online analytical processing these systems are designed for specific analytical work so if you want to understand last three years of data so you can use data warehouses to do that and on aws we have data warehouse service available called as amazon redshift so the way these things work is that you have some data stored on relational database you build some etl pipeline using service such as emr or glue write etl job and then process that data and put that data on some data warehouse such as in this particular case we have aws redshift and the fun part is you will use the same language such as sql structured query language to query your database now if you want to query the last three years of data then it will take much less time compared to relational database now the these operation we talked about are generally called as batch operation that happens once a day or twice a day but if you want to process data in real time such as google maps or uber you have to use different services and number 7th on the list is we have amazon kinesis amazon kinesis makes it easy to collect process and analyze real time streaming data so you can get timely insights and react quickly to new information now you might already know about the real time data such as you might be using google map you see all the information are getting in real time to you so one of the major use cases of kinesis is to process the real time data you might have real time data coming from different sources such as sensors stock market data bitcoin transaction or whatever you can use this data and process that data in real time to get the final insight so generally on amazon app you get to see the real time data such as your order got created your order got shipped these things are event driven so whenever this action happens it gets sent to you in real time so main benefits of kinesis is it is real time fully managed scalable and like this there are so many different services available for data processing on AWS such as AWS data migration service if you want to migrate data from one database to another you can use Amazon QuickSight for visualization you can use Amazon SageMaker for machine learning related work so i will provide a documentation link to all of these services in the description so make sure you check it out and again if you learned something new from this video then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the project pro channel thank you for watching see you in the next video